good morning. One of the people commenting, new people, as of last night, asked a question and said, is it worth getting the extended warranty? Yes, it is. I'm going to give you a situation scenario why. There was a lady that came into the dealership when I worked down south in Louisiana. And down south it gets hot, so a lot of people leave their cars running with the AC on. She left her kids in the car. She had to run into the dollar store real quick and grab some cigarettes and then come back out. Her children decided they wanted to climb in the front seat while she was in the dollar store because it wasn't less, less than five minutes start pushing all the buttons and stuff on the radio face when they start push, pushing all the buttons on the radio face and changing the music and having a good old time then started dropping change from the change cup into the radio slot city area that change got down inside the radio and stuff like that and at first there was nothing wrong well, as she began to drive the vehicle and function uh, use the radio functions put CDs in and out all of a sudden the CD got jammed and she said it was kind of funny because I could hear it sound like little metal marbles just bouncing around inside the radio every time I hit a bump it'd be like ching 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 and it backed out change bounce around inside the radio so she brings it to the dealership I take the vehicle in pull it in my stall break the radio and everything down pull it out of the dash Pull the radio apart, find all the change inside the radio. It shorted all kinds of stuff out, ruined the radio. She had to pay $600 for the radio, and then she had to pay two and a half hours, one hour for me to diagnose and pull everything apart, another hour for me to install everything, and a half hour to get everything programmed. So this one single repair ended up costing her right at a thousand dollars that's not without tax whatever the tax is that you tack on top of that just for a radio and inconvenience her by eating up her time now we could make some comments about leaving children in cars with the vehicle running but that's not what this video is about this video is specifically about is the ESP worth it now take you to another scenario a guy comes in with a Ford Explorer. He's out of warranty. The front covers leak. The timing chains are rattling. His phasers are too far out of normal operating position. Make chains make a noise and everything else. 100, 102,000 miles. That gentleman brought his vehicle into the dealership, and this is the same gentleman it said he did not buy the ESP well by not buying the ESP this job cost him I don't know seven hours in labor um, four five six hundred dollars in parts a couple thousand dollars just for that one repair but that ESP could have 2400 bucks 2800 bucks I've seen some people get these wild ESPs, like they pay 3,200 bucks, but their ESP goes until 150,000 miles, everything covered from front to back. I've seen people get maintenance care, premium care ESPs where they don't even pay for oil changes. They don't even pay for wiper blades. They pay for nothing that goes into the vehicle. They, pay, they may pay like $3,800, but for that vehicle's life, so let's just say up to 150,000 miles, the person never paid for a single thing that went into that vehicle because they got a extended care, premium care package with maintenance that paid for every single thing that needed to be done. And the guy ended up going through several sets of brakes because it was a transit van and the rear brakes wear out faster than the front by far. For some reason with the transit vans the calipers like to lock up and the brakes wear out really fast on those vans bad 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 design but it's the truth 
never paid for a single maintenance thing. None of his oil changes, none of his wiper blades, none of his fluid exchanges. Everything by interval, all the brakes, even when they're ahead of time, done with that maintenance premium care ESP package. Yeah. There are some crazy, crazy, crazy ESP packages out there, and people are like, oh, I'm not paying 3800 for that. I'm not paying 4000 for that. Okay, then don't. But I'll see you on your next $2,000 job. I'll see you on your next radio with change inside it. I'll see you on the next, you know, uh, wheel hub or wheel bearing going out when I charge you two and a half hours to remove and explore a wheel bearing because even though book time says it's an hour, it's not an hour. We got to beat the living hell out of those things to get them out of there. I'll see you. I'll see you when those things add up. Yes, ESP warranty is 100% worth it. Do yourself a favor and find some kind of extended service plan, even if it's an aftermarket warranty plan, like say for instance, the mechanic. The mechanic is a an aftermarket warranty company, but every time I've sent them something under the customer's provision, like uh, I had to do a rack and pinion in a vehicle, it's a $2,700 rack and pinion. The deductible was like a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks, but every single part that went into that guy's vehicle was one hundred percent covered, other than the two hundred dollars for the deductible. The aftermarket uh, extended coverage company took care of everything. They don't barely ask you any questions. If you if you have a good reputation with them and your shop builds up this good reputation with them, they'll say, "Okay, so how did he come up with the conclusion the rack and pinion needs to be replaced?" Aside from the fact that you can't steer it anymore, and aside from the, the fact that you basically have to fight this thing tooth and nail to get it to turn and there's no more power assist, there were U3000 codes in the computer where the module's completely corrupt and no good anymore. And they're like, okay, all right, so obviously he's did his job, go ahead and replace it. And then I'll tack on their new tie rod ends if I have to, new uh, tie rod locking nuts, new uh, tie rod end nuts uh, I'll tack on the half hour for the front toe set when I'm done they pay for it but it's worth it because a lot of people think oh I don't need that I don't need that I don't need that and in today's vehicles in COVID era where you know the manufacturing facilities are supposed to be staffed at five to six hundred people per facility but they can only have 200 people in the facility or 250 people in the facility yet they're trying to they're still trying to push high production numbers. What do you think goes into the quality control? Down. What may happen after your vehicle gets out of its bumper to bumper warranty? You may be in the dealer because of something that was missed. You may be in the dealer, you know, after 60,000 miles because of something that wasn't torqued properly at a part of the, the assembly plant and something went bad. That ESP kicks in, your butt's saved. Or that it, you know, aftermarket warranty kicks in, your butt is saved, but make sure you get a good, reputable one. A lot of dealers that you buy vehicles from will actually give you their own type of warranty because you're buying from them. So always see if that's an option. Some dealers will say any of your powertrain stuff is covered until 100,000 miles, and we'll make sure of it. Always make sure you ask about that, because some will do that. And, but that's under that ownership of that dealer. If they sell ownership, or the dealer name changes, that deal may be off the table. So don't go in there being upset, thinking, oh, you told me, different owners, different different rules apply then. So, I hope this helps. Thanks, guys.